designing a research topic, and formulating a research title. Those are the two topics that we will discuss today. channel. This is Dr. Lorna C. Velasquez. Today, we are going to talk about two important topics. But before that, kung bago ka pala sa aking YouTube channel, please don't forget to click the subscribe button and hit the notification bell so that you will be notified as soon as I upload a new video. Let's get started. My lecture today will focus on designing a research topic useful in daily life and formulating a research title. In my lecture, I want to help senior high school students kasi nauunawaan ko na bago kayo makagraduate ng senior high school ay kailangan yung mapag-aralan yung tatlong uri ng researches. Meron kayong practical research 1 or the qualitative research. Meron kayong practical research 2 or the quantitative research at meron kayong research project. So, not only senior high school students, even college students, and those who are taking up Master of Arts, Doctor of Education, or Doctor of Philosophy. Medyo hirap silang mag-construct ng title and at the same time, mag ng isang research na makatutulong sa pang-araw-araw nating buhay. So, I hope that this lecture today will help you because as much as I can, I will simplify. Gagawin kong mas madali para kahit pa paano ay makatulong and at the same time, mas mapadali ang ginagawa ninyo mga researches. We will begin by designing a research useful in daily life. You know already that research affects society and the lives of each one of us each day of our lives and every day. The way we perceive the world, the way we experience relationship with each other, the way society is organized and governed, and a lot more are influenced by the ever-expanding front figures of knowledge. And for us to make sense of the world and even our own lives, we need research. For different branches of knowledge or disciplines, as well as corporations or even NGOs in search for answers to phenomena, people do research. What are the possible research topics related to daily life? Remember that as researcher, we need to be observant. We need to look at the surroundings. We need to open our eyes. We need to be curious about things that are related to our daily life. Because in as much as we can, we need to solve the problems that will benefit not only you, but your community, your school, the people in our country, and to the world at large. Now, ano ba yung mga bagay na may kinalaman sa buhay natin? Mga bagay na kung saan ay curious tayo. Mga bagay na hindi pa natin masyadong alam o hindi pa napag-aaralan pero gusto mong malaman. So, sa ngayon, since we are experiencing pandemic, pwede nating maging focus ng ating uh, research ay ang Mga bagay na may kinalaman sa kalusugan, di ba? Or healthcare. How about mental health? Okay ba yung ating mental health? Wala ba tayo nararanasan ang anxiety? Depression? Specifically, the trying times. So, if you think uh, kailangan mo siyang pag-aralan, so you can also focus on that. Okay? Ano yung mga physical activities na ginagawa mo, lalo ngayon merong pandemia about, about uh, daily exercise and the like. Yan, pwede rin yun. 
How about mobile hospitals in teleconsultations? Usong-uso ito ngayon, lalo na nung nagkaroon ng ECQ. Okay, so hindi tayo pumunta sa mga hospitals. Kadalasan, kung wala rin naman tayong sadya o mahalagang lakad. So, usong-uso yung mga teleconsultations na yan. So, pwede rin natin maging focus yun. And other related topics na may kinalaman sa healthcare. Another is livelihood projects. Mga usaping may kinalaman sa trabaho. Alam naman natin lahat ang daming mga taong nawala ng trabaho because of the closure of businesses. Diba? Ang daming mga nagsarang mga uh, establishment and as well as restaurants, offices, diba? Dahil sa pandemia. So, yung mga bagay na may kinalaman sa trabaho o mga proyekto na pangkabuhayan, pwede po natin maging focus yan ng ating pag-aaral. Another is social security. Kumusta yung ating social security? Specifically na, o dahil karamihan ng tao nasa bahay lang, ba? Diba? So, lalo bang dadagdagan yung uh, crimes or nabawasan. Okay, so, pwede rin po yun. We also have entrepreneurial ventures, yung mga mahilig magnegosyo. Lalo na ngayon, marami ang nagkaroon ng online uh, business, ba? Diba? Kasi, Uh, kailangan nating magpatuloy para mabuhay dahil uh, medyo mahirap yung ating pangkabuhayan sa panahon ng pandemya So, pwede rin po yun, pag-aralan. Another is education. Actually, itong education is very related to our current situation. So, sa mga estudyante, ano ba yung mga bagay na gusto mong malaman? Mga bagay na nai-experience mo ngayon at nagkakaroon ka ng kaunting problema at gusto mo pa rin pag-aralan. So, pwede yun. So, halimbawa, uh, regarding your studies, online learning, okay, kumusta ka? Uh, how about using technology? Wala ka bang nararanasan? Uh, problem? So, ano ba yung mga gusto mong pagtuunan ng pansin? na may kinalaman sa edukasyon. So, bilang estudyante, kayo po ang nakakaalam kung ano yung mga gusto nyo pang malaman. Ano ba yung uh, gusto nyo pag-aralan para kayo ay makatulong sa paglutas ng mga suliranin na may kinalaman sa edukasyon. For teachers, meron kayong mga tinatawag na uh, instructional strategies, techniques in teaching, uh, about in online teaching, Uh, of course, meron tayo mga personal experiences about online teaching, how about in terms of curriculum, in terms of instruction, yan, pwede po natin maging focus din yan, pag-aaral. So, how about the new normal? Kumusta, kumusta kaya? So, pute, kailangan natin i-elucidate, kailangan natin dutasin kung ano man yung mga alam nating problema na dapat malutas na may kinalaman sa edukasyon, pwede rin po natin pagtuunang pansin yan. So, pwede rin maging uh, research topic natin. And many more about education. And then, another is online or cyber crimes. So, lahat ng tao ay exposed ngayon sa online teaching, online learning. So, Meron tayong tinatawag na attachment with with friends, okay, on social media. So, most of the time, online tayo. So, kamusta naman? Wala ba tayong tinatawag na online cyber crimes? Okay? So, you can focus on that. Another is gender equality. Ito ay, sa pwede nating masabing age-old problem. Uh... Gender equality is one of the topics that you can focus on your research. We also have homelessness, unemployment, poverty alleviations, traffic situations, preservation and protection of the environment, politics, especially now, dahil malapit na naman yung ating botohan. So, bilang mamamayang Pilipino or as a responsible citizen, we have our social responsibility to contribute 
So, hindi tayo dapat yung walang pakialam, pakikialam na productive dapat. Kasi, we can also suffer, even the young. Diba? So, uh, we need to select good leaders of our country. So, we need to know more about politics, okay, so that we will be enlightened on how we are going to select good leaders of our country. And many other things or topics that we can focus related to our daily life. Research must be vertically aligned with your strand, your course, or your field of specialization. It simply means that if you are taking up ABM, your topic must also be related or aligned to ABM. And so with STEM, sports, technical or vocational, information and communication technology or ICT, arts and design, technology, livelihood or entrepreneurship. So it must be related. It must be aligned so that you can help solve the problem related to your strand, to your course, or to your field of specialization. A research project will be worth it if it has the following processes. First is planning. According to Benjamin Franklin, if you fail to plan, you are planning to fail. Meaning, planning is the initial step that you need to accomplish prior to the implementation of this research project. Second, the execution of plans. It is recommended that the execution will be, will be implemented after planning so that everything will be polished and it is also normal that during the execution of plans there are irregularities there are lapses there are things that you need to improve or to enhance so it is part of the process because the execution of plan is said to be uh, not perfect and it is developmental the third one are the resources and time when we talk about resources and time, we are dealing with human resource or human resources can also be budget and other materials needed in the research project. Next is the manpower. It is needed because as a researcher, you cannot do it alone. You need people. You need manpower. Are you going to do your research project alone? Are you going to do it by pair, by group? Okay, so it depends on the kind or nature of the project. Next would be the budget. Budget is said to be the most important element in this research project you can't do anything without this budget so budget is very needed in the implementation of your research project before you make a final decision on your topic reflect on these questions first what area or areas not covered in classroom lesson or discussions do I still want to know or investigate in my specific track? Second, if I will do this research project, how useful will it be to me as a senior high school graduate and to the community where I belong and even to the larger community, the country, and the world? What are the important tips that you should remember in choosing a topic for a research study? First, it must be a topic of your interest. Ang isang researcher ay excited gumawa, nandun yung eagerness na gawin yung isang topic na yun dahil meron siyang gusto malaman, meron siyang gusto gawin. 
excited siya. It is because interesado siya dun sa topic na yun. So, something that you are curious about. Something that you would like to know more about that particular topic. So, it must be a topic of your interest. You will be motivated to conduct, to implement, and to offer ways and means, even uh, recommendations and suggestions for that particular topic if you are interested in that particular topic. Next, it should be doable with the resources at your disposal and within the required time frame. So, during planning, uh, makikita na natin dyan kung ano yung mga resources na kailangan sa research na yan, ano ba yung mga dapat mong gawin. So, na doon pa lang sa planning, meron na yan. So, kailangan ba natin ng human resources, manpower, Kailangan ba natin ng budget dyan? How about the materials na iba pa na kakailanganin din doon sa proyekto na ginagawa mo or sa study na ginagawa mo? So, when I was a student, hindi ako pa agad nag-formulate ng title or ng topic. So, tinitingnan ko muna yung mga materials na magagamit ko, available ba siya, kaya ba, pasok ba siya sa budget. So, kung kailangan ko ng ganito, meron ba ako makukuha, meron ba ang available. So, malaga na kompleto yung mga resources natin para smooth ang ating uh, research uh, study or the, the process ay kumbaga tuloy-tuloy, hindi siya pahinto-hinto dahil sa kulang nga ng mga resources. So, malaga na kompleto yung resources bago tayo magtuloy. Kasi kung hindi siya kompleto, useless yung ginagawa natin. And speaking of doable, it means that it should be achievable. It should be attainable within the given time frame. So, in high school, in senior high school, in, in college, and even in graduate, we are bounded with semesters. And we have also this deadlines of submission. Now, tanungin natin yung sarili natin. Kaya ba siyang tapusin within the time frame? Kaya, ba, kaya bang mamit yung deadline? Kaya bang maisubmit dun sa tamang date ng submission? So, kung kaya, then proceed. If you think you will exceed at hindi talaga siya kaya, then better change the topic. Kasi, useless naman kung tapos na yung submission, hindi ka pa rin tapos. So, kailangan mamit mo yung deadline at dapat kaya siyang gawin within that allotted time. Okay, lalo na sa mga students na gusto makagraduate, baka naman gusto mo target mo ay graduate ka this year. Pero, yung ginagawa mong study, medyo matagal at hindi kaya uh, tapusin within this period or this year. So, kailangan baguhin mo siya. But if you're not uh, that very particular with the time, hindi ka naman nagmamadali, then proceed. So, it is always on the discretion of the researcher. Okay? Next, the research topic should be focused and well-defined. So, dito nagkakaroon tayo ng problem because some researchers do not know what to do. And objectives or, or uh, purposes of the study are not clearly defined. So, as a researcher, whatever will be your purposes or objectives must be well defined from the start. So, dapat alam mo kung ano ba talaga ang gusto kong mangyari? Bakit ako nagkakandak ng research? Bakit ko kailangan aralin to? Bakit ko kailangan uh, i-focus yung topic na ito? Ano bang makukuha ko dito? And at the end, Ano ba yung magagawa ko as a researcher? So, it must be clearly defined from the start pa lang. Kasi kung from the start, hindi mo na alam yung gagawin mo, parang hindi clear sa mind mo kung ano yung gusto mo talagang mangyari, then it will be a waste of time. Sayang naman yung effort ninyo. Sayang yung panahon. Kapag wala tayong direction, wala tayong objective. So, uh, again, it must be clearly defined. Okay? You need to be very specific on that. Next, you must not allow 
personal views, ideas, and opinions. So, going back to item number one, it must be a topic of your interest. Although that it is a topic of your interest, your personal views, ideas, and opinions must be eliminated. Hindi dapat ito mahaluan ng ating mga personal na opinion, mga ideya, at ating mga views. So, kailangan maging objective tayo dito. So, let the findings be revealed. Hindi dapat sa inyong manggaling yan. That's why may, meron tayong tinatawag na respondents. Meron tayong mga tinatawag na participants or participant. So, sa kanila dapat manggaling yon. All we need to do is to interpret, to analyze, and to present the findings. So, our personal views will not be entertained in the research writing. Next. Research project must be as objective as possible. So, this is in connection with item number four. It should be freed from your personal biases or preferences as a researcher. So, as much as possible, yung mga subjectivity na to ay uh, ma-avoid natin in, in writing your research or in conducting your research. So, even yung mga preferences natin, Okay, so dapat ito ay maiwasan sa pagkakandak ng research. Next, you should avoid research topics that involve your making moral judgment about certain kinds of behavior. So, hindi pwedeng uh, nangungula tayo. Yung mga prediction, bawal yan. So, those are the things that you need to remember in choosing a topic for a research study. Let's proceed now to our next topic, which is writing a research title. Writing a research title is one of the difficult or challenging parts of the research paper. Why? Most of the time, yung ating mga researchers ay dito tumatagal. Dito nahihirapan sa pag-construct ng kanilang mga Research title. Ano nga ba yung mga dapat nating tandaan? Ano yung mga tips? Magpapaano mag-construct o mag-formulate ng ating mga research titles? Remember that research title or research project is a product of real-world observations. Dilemas. Wide reading. Selective viewing on television programs, films, documentaries, videos, etc. It is also said that research title or research project is a product of a meaningful interactions with significant others and deep reflection. So the title of the research is the research problem or inquiry in capsule form. Great care must be taken in the formulations of the research title and it must clearly reflect the topic of investigation. The following are the tips on how to write a research topic. First, it must be original, clear, concise or specific. When you finally decide on a research topic, make sure that your research topic and research questions match. Third, two broad topics will lead to nowhere. Broad topics must be narrowed down into specific topic. Fourth, the purpose or intent of the study must be clear. Now, I have here three examples of broad topics and I also have here the corresponding specific topics. Now, let's begin with the first example. Under broad topic, we have agribusiness. So, I believe that you are also aware that agribusiness is a term used to describe 
the sector that encompasses all economic activities that are related to farming such as chemicals, breeding, crop production, or farming. It can also be farm machinery, distribution, marketing, and sales. So look at that example. Uh, considering the time frame, okay, so baka naman tapos na yung time frame, yung, yung date of submission, hindi ka pa tapos. It is because of the coverage. Napakarami naman. Ang dami mong dapat pagtuunang pansin. It's like chemicals, breeding, crop production. So, just focus on a specific topic. So, kung gusto mo yung chemicals, then focus on chemicals. Kung gusto mo yung marketing and sales, then focus on marketing and sales. So, para meron tayong target, hindi, hindi lahat, para hindi naman kayo masyadong tumagal. Okay? So, papaano natin gagawin yon? How this broad topic will be narrowed down into a specific topic. So, from agribusiness, uh, to make it more specific, gagawin natin the impact of agribusiness on the Philippine economy. So, I have here impact of agribusiness on Philippine economy. So, it, it is clear here that our target is to determine the impact of agribusiness on Philippine economy. So, Ano ba yung impact nun ng agribusiness sa Philippine economy? Nakatulong ba ito? Tumas ba lalo yung ekonomiya natin dahil sa agribusiness o bumaba? So, in here, uh, from, from broad topic, it was narrowed down into a specific topic. So, we have our target. Uh, it is now clear that our only focus is to determine the impact of agribusiness on Philippine economy. Another example here is blended learning in English classes. So it is said to be broad because when we talk about blended learning, it is a combination of face-to-face -face and online teaching and learning or online instruction. So Hindi natin alam kung para saan yung blended learning. Uh, ano bang uh, gustong sabihin ng ating researcher? So, it is said to be broad kasi pwede siyang face-to-face, -face, pwede rin siyang online instruction, or uh, pwede namang combination of blended and learning. And at the same time, hindi natin alam kung ano ang gagawin dito sa blended learning in English classes. So, something... Uh, something wrong or it is incomplete, de ba? So, it must be narrowed down into a specific topic. So, to make it more specific, gagawin natin yung blended learning in English classes into a correlation on the use of blended learning in freshman English classes and student achievement. So, maliyo na po dito ang um, na is mangyari ng researcher because uh, i-correlate niya yung blended learning sa student achievement. Okay, so specific yung target ng ating researcher kasi uh, there is this correlation of blended learning in student achievement. Now, for additional information, in uh, constructing your research title or topic, you need to remember that uh, first, you need to know the distinction between quantitative and qualitative research. So, if we are going to talk about quantitative research, uh, this independent and dependent variable must be considered in formulating your topic. Okay, what do you mean by independent variable? So, these are variables that can cause the change or certain changes of the dependent variable. Okay, ano naman yung dependent variable? Ang dependent variable 
ay yun yung effects or results because of the independent variable. So, in here, let us try to identify what is independent variable. Okay, again, independent variable is the cause. Okay, the cause of the change of the dependent variable. So, in here, blended learning in English or blended learning in freshman English classes is the independent variable while the dependent variable here is the student achievement because the student achievement will depend on the kind or the, the blended learning that will be given in the freshman English classes. Okay, so the IV is the blended learning while the DV is the student achievement. So, uh, it is important for us to identify the independent and the dependent variable in our research topic or research title. Okay? So, I hope that in this given example, you were able to understand the difference between broad and specific topic. And again, the, the presence of independent and dependent variable. And the last but not the least example given here under broad topic is social networking. So, bakit naman naging broad topic yung social networking? So, I believe we are also aware that when we talk about social networking uh, this is being in touch with each other using websites and web-based applications such as Facebook, Instagram, MySpace, and the like. So, hindi natin alam po ano yung focus for this social networking. Ano yung gustong mangyari? Basta social networking lang. So, it, it is said to be wrong. And, to narrow it down into a specific topic, from social networking, it will become the cause and effect relationships of social networking and online selling. So, we know already that the target is to know the cause and effect relationships of the social networking and online selling. Okay, so... Uh, I hope that in this given examples, you can now have your clear mental picture of how your research uh, title will be formulated uh, considering the, the idea of narrowing the broad topics into a, a specific topics. And you need also to consider the independent and dependent variable in the formulation of your topic. Alright, so let me give you an example of a resource title. But before that, I have here three lines, which means that your research title should be written in an inverted pyramid form, all capital letters. So, please see my example, friendship and its impact on a person's well-being. So, I only consumed two lines here because the ideal number of words in your title is from 10 to 15 long words, okay? So, if you think there are irrelevant phrases or words or necessary words in your title, you need to delete, okay? Because uh, you need to remember the guidelines in writing your research title. Now, always remember that there is also this presence of independent and dependent dependent variable in 
formulating your topic. Alright. So, I hope that my lesson today will somehow help you or enlighten you on how to design and formulate good research title. This is my reference. So, you may also use this book. This is uh, a very good and useful book that you can use for research. So that will be all for today. I hope that you learned a thing or two from my lecture. Hopefully, you can be able to design your own research topic and construct or formulate your own research title. I hope to see you again on my next research episode. And once again, this is Dr. Lorna C. Velasquez sharing you this quote of Eugene Bell Jr. Aspire to inspire before you expire. God bless everyone. Bye.